Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of our Pokemon Battle series, The School of Hard Knocks. So throughout this episode, like every other, we'll be jumping on to the Pokemon Global Link Battle Spot Ladder, playing under the Championship Battle Rules, which are the equivalent rule sets of the VGC 2018 season. So, we kicked off the week this week. It's absolutely amazing to be back after last week's debacle, where we were without internet, myself anyway, and we couldn't upload any videos. So it's great to be back. Great to be getting back in the mix of things with you guys. I did honestly miss you all, um, so it's really nice to get back involved. And thank you so much for all the comments and things that you keep throwing out onto the videos. And do keep them coming. If you've got any questions about this team, and like I keep saying, keep the suggestions coming in. Because the ones that we've had so far have been absolutely gold. So we've had some amazing suggestions for what cores and what Pokemon you want to see played on the channel. So, you know, I am keeping a record of everything that you guys say. And, you know... If we can't get some of them played, you know, next week or whatever, then I will make sure that we will play them at some point. So do keep them coming in and, you know, I really appreciate every single one of them. So thank you so much, guys. You are all absolutely top class amazing. But enough of that because you're here to see some battles. So we had a good, couple of good games yesterday with the team. Um, I was pretty pleased with how the, the team kind of operated yesterday. I feel like, oh... What's happened? Has the ladder reset? Oh no. I feel like it has, hasn't it? <laughs> okay. So I was kind of hoping to get a good finish with the team to kind of get us maybe back above that 1800 mark by the end of the week. But the ladder has reset. Never mind. So it must be a new season. I should really be aware of this, but never mind. We're into a new season. It makes sense. This is probably officially VGC 18, I guess. So we'll see how we get on in today's games. Hopefully it doesn't take too long to find an opponent. And um, we'll try out and see what we can feature today. Ha! Huh, so we've got Victor as our first opponent. And they are running a team of Driftblim, Tapulele, Arcanine, Cortana, Tapukoko, and that all illustrious Metagross. So we've got Double Steel here. So straight away... Marowak's going to be really good. If we can get it into a good position, you know, it, it really disrupts the type of Coco from operating well. It does a lot of damage to the Metagross, the Cortana, you know, walls the, for the majority of the Arcanine and can do good damage back. Um, we do need to be a bit careful of that Drift Blim because even under a Tailwind, we're not going to be able to outspeed it. Um, it's all about if we can get ourselves into a position where we can get a sub up maybe with it and then from there we can... We can deal with it, but we do have Mandibuzz, so Mandibuzz is going to be another good Pokemon here to bring. I do feel like we could probably safely lead um, Mandibuzz Tapu Fini here. Um, we want Marowak in the back, and then what do we want for our last Pokemon? Hmm. Salamence. <sighs> could be good, could be good, could be good. Hmm. Serena as well isn't bad. Hmm. For our own Metagross, to be honest, isn't the worst. Hmm. Just the Arcanine, I guess, throws a few problems, but I think Metagross isn't a bad shout. It's a nice switch into a lot of stuff that we might see coming out. And with that Earthquake that we've got as well on the Metagross, it helps us against things like Arcanine and the opposing Metagross and Tapu Kokoff. We can get ourselves into nice positions. It also walls Tapu Lele pretty nicely as well, so hopefully. We get on alright in today's match. Hmm. So we'll lead off with that common lead of Mandibuzz and Tapu Fini, and we see Tapu Coco and Metagross in the field. Okay. So you know, I feel right away that this is quite a good opportunity for us to get the Marowak in. Um, we can Tailwind with Mandibuzz and get Marowak onto the field in a tailwind, which is which is quite nice. Which might allow us to get that um, that tip that substitute up that we were saying earlier would be quite important for us, especially if the drift limb is in the back. But it's likely that my opponent may not have brought it because of the, the Manda Buzz threat here. So we'll go for that switch. We'll take out Finny. See the, the Tapu Koko go for a T-Ball and that Lightning Rod ability on the Marowak coming in handy straight away pulling that and protecting the, the Mandibuzz allowing us to get the Tailwind up and we'll see what this Metagross goes for. And it is just a Meteor Mash. 
into the mandibles. Doing a lot of damage, isn't it? Hmm. Okay. We can just roost off that damage this turn and hmm. Let's go for a substitute. While we've got the opportunity to. So my opponent just withdrawing the Tapu Koko, bringing in Tapu Lele. So it will change the terrain. Let's see what this Metagross goes for. Is it going to go for a Protect? No Protect coming out. It might be a Banded Metagross to be honest. We'll soon know if it's kind of, well you know, I would say we soon know if it, if it uses Meteor Mash again but it's kind of the, the obvious choice that it would go for. We do see another Meteor Mash. Hmm. Okay. Let's go for a foul play into the Metagross and just a Shadow Bone into the Lele because the Shadow Bone should pick up the KO onto the Tapu Lele unless it's ridiculously bulky but I'm not expecting it to. So we should pick up a clean KO here which we do which is nice. Get rid of the Lele and we should get a foul play into this Metagross. If it is banded, I don't know what the calc is but we should be doing a lot of damage. Ooh, it might be banded. There's another Meteor Mash so we will lose. Mandibus here, but that's fine. Ooh, okay, Metagross gets an attack boost, which is a an after effect of Meteor Mash. Um, hmm, what do we want to do here? Let's bring in Finny. Because if the Coco comes out, it's fine. But it is the Cortana, okay. Right. Hmm. I mean we could just double, we could just go for a, a Muddy Water and a Flare Blitz into the Cortana. We're still in Tailwind. I think I'm just going to do that Flare Blitz and just Muddy Water rather than the switch out. Oh, but a Muddy Water misses, but it hits the Metagross which is the more important target. It's just whether that Cortana is sashed. We get the flare blitz off here. Let's see. And it is sashed, so we do see that. So we'll probably take a leaf blade into Tapu Fini here, I'd imagine. Do take a lot of recoil damage as well. Ooh, and it's a night slash. Alright. Okay. So that's an interesting choice. Hmm. This makes it awkward because, oh well I guess it doesn't because we've still got Metagross in the back and we do have access to Bullet Punch. So we can quite safely just switch in Metagross. We're not worried about any electric type, type attacks coming into that slot. We'll just protect Marowak here just to keep it around for at least one more turn. Once we've got Metagross in we can we can put a lot of pressure onto that Cotton in the next turn, potentially pick up a KO uh, with Bullet Punch and then target down the Coco with a Marowak. So hopefully we should be able to close out this game. So that withdraw Finny. Hopefully we don't see a discharge. It's just a dazzling gleam. So Metagross is going to be able to take this quite comfortably. And Cortana going for a Leaf Blade into the Metagross as well, but again, we're able to take that. So, this turn is where we will go for that Bullet Punch into Cortana, and we will just go for a we'll go for a Shadow Bone into the Coco. I don't suppose it'll pick up the KL, but we don't need to worry about it too much. We just don't want to lose our Marowak too early, because we should be able to take a Dazzling Gleam from the Coco, at least one. Yeah, so we should, we're probably going to be able to take another as well. There's a Shadow Bone. Okay. I'm just going to go for an Earthquake and just detect with Marowak as well. We probably don't need to. We've probably been really, really safe about this, but critical hits can happen, I guess. 
and we don't want this type of Gogo being able to launch any electric type attacks off if we can help it anyway because we do have the Finny in the back the Metagross is quite a low range at the minute so this play just kind of locks up the win but very good game to my opponent and Marwak coming in clutch there the interesting thing there was um, and I think it's probably something that we'll see more and more players kind of adapting is the Night Slash on Carter Honor um, it is very useful against and against um, things like Metagross, which have become very popular. Um, Marowak again, very popular. Um, so, and it's got that high critical hit rate as well. So, if you pair it up with something like the Scorp Lens, then you know that can become quite quite deadly quite quick. Or you maybe go with a Sword Stance set. Um, it's just the thing is with Cartani, you kind of it's hard to fit all the moves in on it that you want all the time so you kind of always want leaf blade you always want sacred sword you want smart strike and then night slash maybe we see um assault vest cartana come back in a big way maybe you never know but we can talk about that another time maybe on the stream tomorrow evening because we have an ex-opponent hector and they are running a team of golduck pelipper tapu koko garchomp metagross and serena so Matching Serena's here um, and Metagross. So, what do we do against this team? I do like Finny as a lead. You know, we'll be able to take advantage of that rain. We're not too heavily threatened from the rain lead if we do see it. So, I think it will go with it. Um, Mandibus here is going to be good, I think, because it gives us the option to tailwind if we want. Again, we'll be able to take uh, a Hydro Vortex. Um, it's a nice immunity to anything that Garchomp can potentially throw out at us and gives us a way to hit the Metagross um, outside of Finny in the rain. Um, what do we want to do for our last slots? I feel like Marowak is going to be quite, you know, the Lightning Rod, even though it might only be for one turn. I think we had a game yesterday or maybe the day before in rain and we kind of u utilized it. Um, just to get around the Coco, and once the Coco was gone, everything else could kind of operate a lot better. So we will bring Marowak, and then, hmm. Let's go Metagross this time around. Maybe Salamence might have been good as well, just for the, um, the Intimidate for the Garchomp. But, I just feel like Metagross will be able to deal with Serena a lot better. It's going to be a, a, be a good switch in. You know, the clear body, we're not going to take any damage from those. Well, we're not going to take any drops from the Trop Kick. Um, and also with the Earthquake that we have access to, um, it gives us a nice matchup in the end game if it comes down to Metagross versus Metagross. So we see my opponent lead off with that double duck combination. Pelipper getting the rain up. Interestingly enough, after our type of finish, so we will be outspeeding it, which is nice. So we can just go for a muddy water here. Just from calcs that I know, we should be doing about 50% to the Pelipper minimum. Um, and I'm going to go for a tailwind of my own. Yeah. Yeah, because if the Pelipper goes for a tailwind this turn, then at least you know, we can outspeed the Pelipper the next, next time round. So. Do you see the Golduck switch out? Which is quite interesting. Tap Coco coming in in place of that. And we do launch Muddy Water. We do hit. We're going to be doing huge damage to this Tap Coco. And pick up the KO. Get a critical hit on Pelipper, which is a bit unfortunate with that accuracy drop. So we do get very fortunate there. Um, and we just see a Hurricane come out. Okay, into the, the Finny. Which is huge for us because it means if we get the Tailwind up. And it means that my opponent can't really get their tailwind up because I can just muddy water and file play into the Pelipper. And that will guarantee that it goes down if it doesn't protect or switch out. So we see the Golduck come back, hit the field. So we are locked into muddy water though with our Finny. I'd imagine the Golduck could probably still outspeed us. Um, but I will just go for a foul play into the Pelipper slot. And Pelipper going for that protect this turn round. Okay, so Golduck probably going for a Hydro Vortex. We do outspeed the Golduck. 
But which does it target into? The Hydro Vortex might be able to pick up the KO onto Finny now. But we'll have to see. If it's into Mandibuzz, Mandibuzz will be able to take this because it's just a, a flying tank, isn't it? But it's into the Finny. Okay. Ooh, but we do take it. And Finny just so bulky able to take that big Z move. Okay. So. Hmm. I am going to double into the Pelipper again. Now if a Muddy Water hits it just redirects the foul play into the Golduck, it's just safer doing that because I could target into the Golduck but the thing is if the Muddy Water misses like it's just done then we kind of cover ourselves just by going for this foul play um, on the Pelipper just to stop that Tailwind because if the Tailwind goes up it kind of, ours is going to be ending soon so it's going to mean it's going to be very difficult for us to um, kind of build on any momentum because they're so powerful these two Pokemon if you get them into a into a tailwind then you know anything we bring in we've just got no chance of outspeeding so we do pick up the KO on Pelipper stop that potential tailwind coming out um, and now what do we do let's bring in Metagross oh yeah hmm it's my opponent probably got Let's bring in the Metagross. We know the Tapu Koko has gone. Depending on what my opponent's last pocket is, it's a Garchomp. Okay. Hmm. I do need to play this a little bit carefully, I think, now. Hmm. I don't feel like a Bullet Punch is going to be enough to take down this Golduck. We know the Garchomp gone, go for. Um, An earthquake. Huh. Could just go into the gold duck. Protect Metagross, go into the gold duck with a foul play. Which is whether or not that chomp goes for a sword stance. If it does, that makes things a bit more awkward, but let's see. Gold duck just protecting you. So we might just see an earthquake come out from the guard chomp this turn. Hmm. It might have been better to go for the foul play into the Garchomp here. It was probably the more likely thing to, to attack. We just see a rock slide come out. And uh, Tillman pairs out. So, hmm. Now we definitely know the Garchomp can't go for an earthquake. So we could just go for our own Earthquake and go for a uh, another Tailwind of our own. Because the rain will be ending soon. We just see a Hydro Pump come out from the Golduck into Metagross. We do take it and just another Rock Slide. Mind Buzz avoids, so that's huge for us. We will get this Tailwind up. So a little bit lucky there, but um, the Rock Slide wouldn't have, wouldn't have KO'd us. And there's just potential of us getting flinched. Which Metagross does. Rain does stop. Um, I feel like the Golduck probably protects here. And, oh well. The Metagross is just going to keep on earthquaking. Uh, rock sliding, isn't it? So, I mean, we just double. Like, we'll just double in. We'll go for an earthquake and we'll go for a foul play into Golduck. Or should we go for... Let's go for an Earthquake and then a Foul Play into the Garchomp slot. It's just what... No, into the Golduck. It's just in case um, we get flinched again. Uh, the Golduck protecting. Okay. So we're going to get a bit of damage on. I think this Garchomp's probably scarfed. You've got to imagine it is. not though. Okay, so just, just see a Dragon Claw come out into the Metagross. And we can go for that Earthquake again. And just foul play. And like I say, I'm just doubling into the Gold Duck here just to make sure um, if we do take it down with the Earthquake 
then the, f the foul player will get redirected. Golduck goes for a, a protect, but we get the, the foul player off onto it eventually. Pick up the KO, so we will get a single target earthquake into this. Garchomp might be an assault vest Garchomp. Maybe a bit of chip damage, we'll see. Just another rock slide from the Garchomp here. But we should be able to kind of close this game up now with Marowak. We can just double into it with a Shadow Ball and a Foul Play, and that should be enough to pick up the KO onto it. And there we go. So, Foul Play and a Shadow Bone should be enough. So, there's the Shadow Bone from the Marowak. And Foul Play, and there we go. Very good game to my opponent, and nice couple of games for the episode today. So, we've done alright again today. Um, I know it's a bit low ladder, but um, I wasn't expecting the ladder to reset when it did. Um, so that's kind of took me a little bit by surprise, but hopefully another couple of really good games today. Um, we've had a good, you know, going up against Rain Rain's quite a hard matchup, but I think just the Tapu Fini and just with the, the, the choice specs on it, it gives it such a good matchup against Double Ducks because you, you saw what the damage was like. I mean, we did get a critical hit on the Pelipper, but... Um, normally doing about 50% regardless to Pelipper so as long as we, we're just keeping it on the field taking control and you know it's able to take um, hurricanes it's, it can take the Hydro Vortex as well it's just pumping out so much damage and if you make one little mistake like we saw my opponent do there by switching in the Tapu Koko maybe expecting the, the Finny to, to calm mind or something that turn then you know you get punished for it so and that's one of the reasons I really like the choice specs it does leave you quite vulnerable at times um, especially to things like Cortana um, and, and Tapu Bulu and stuff like that but if you can get it into positions because of the damage output that you're doing it makes it such a good Pokemon and with its bulk as well I do really like it it's probably one of my favorite variants of, of Tapu Fini and I think that's probably one of the problems that I've always had with Tapu Fini um, I love it as a Pokemon I love the the Misty Terrain's ability to disrupt the the other the um, Tapu's terrains um, but it's always its damage output and to get up to anywhere near what you need it to you need to get at least a couple of calm minds up and just by doing that it's quite a lot of resource to kind of get that up and then from there you've got to start attacking by that time your opponent's normally got quite a lot of momentum and maybe quite far into their strategy so it makes it quite difficult sometimes um, to get it going but with the, the specs variant as we saw Ryota and many other players run at Worlds um, it just it's good to go from the start of the battle and you know it's easy enough to switch out if you've got good synergy in the back and uh, yeah I do really like it but let me know what your opinions are on Tapu Fini what's your what's your um, favorite variation of it have you tried the the choice specs variant and um, there's also the choice scarf variant which is one of the um, the comments that we had um, for suggestions for new teams going forward with the Sock and Cortana or Tapu Bulu partner with it, um, which is really cool. Um, so there's there's a lot of different ways Tapu Fini can be run, but do let me know. And more importantly, keep those suggestions coming in for the um, for what you want to see next week as well, because I'll start putting ideas together and we'll get something in place for next week which should be really good so we'll wrap things up there guys i hope you've enjoyed today's episode if you have as always please leave a like on the video it's really appreciated um if you're new to the channel as i always say hi welcome to the channel uh, great to have you here hope you're enjoying the content um, and just hit that subscribe button so you stay up to date with all of our daily content from the school of hard knocks we've got a um QR code series, we've got a best of three battler series that we've got going at the minute, we've got a battle spot double series that we'll be bringing back soon and then we do a stream every Thursday um, which will be happening tomorrow night guys at 9pm so normally 8 to 8pm but tomorrow evening we put it back an hour so it'll be 9pm UK time tomorrow evening over on the Twitch channel. You can find the link if you haven't been there before in the banner of the um, the, the homepage of the, the channel um, and it'll be linked in the description below. Okay, so thanks as always guys. Have an amazing evening. It's been absolutely great. Looking forward to the stream and hanging out with you all tomorrow. Um, 
there will be a QR code episode later, just a little one. Um, and then best of three will be up tomorrow, half past seven before the stream starts. So keep an eye out for that. Um, got a very good friend of mine and top VGC player on tomorrow's episode. So hopefully it's very good entertainment for you guys and you enjoy it. So have a great night, guys. Until next time, I will see you all later. So thanks again. And until then, bye-bye.